I have so many new favorites from the drugstore. It was time we did a roundup of some of the best drugstore products I've tried recently. Most of these are brand new products, but some of them are just new to me. And speaking of affordable favorites, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. You've seen me work with them before. They are a fragrance subscription service where you can test out new fragrances every single month for $17. They have over 700 fragrances on the website. So I'm gonna tell you what I picked out this month. So I picked out four this month and something I've been obsessed with lately, like my favorite note of the moment is anything lactonic. So I chose another milk related scent this month. This is Dead Cool Extra Milk. I really enjoy this as a skin scent. It's definitely soft, but it has this very subtle and fresh quality to it that I have been loving for like a day-to-day -day scent. I also had to get my hands on the Seven Virtues Amber Vanilla. I've been hearing so many people talk about this and anything with the name vanilla in it, like I instantly have to have. I've really been liking this as more of like a nighttime, sexier scent. And then I chose another one from DS and Durga, which is a Brooklyn based fragrance house. And I liked my DS and Durga scent so much last month. I wanted to try another one. So this is pistachio, but I don't know if I like this one. It's not as much for me. It is very pistachio forward. Like it truly just smells like pistachio syrup. If you ever had like any pistachio flavored dessert. So I don't know if this one is for me, but honestly, that's one of the reasons I love Scentbird because I can try perfumes and decide if they maybe don't necessarily work for me. And they also sent me Confessions of a Rebel Get a Room. And this is a little bit more fruit forward, but I don't typically like those type of scents. And somehow this one still works for me. I really enjoy this. You can use my coupon code Kelly55OFF to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, making it just a little over $7. That's available in the US and Canada. Check out the link below, but thank you so much to Scentbird for partnering with me on today's video and let's jump into the faves. Okay, so you know me and we're gonna separate these out by category and I wanna start in base because I feel like I have so many base favorites to talk about even starting actually with skincare. So I wanna talk about this sunscreen from Sunbum. This is their Daily Gel Sunscreen Moisturizer. It's SPF 50. This is so, so, so similar to the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. Not to be confused with the Mineral Unseen Sunscreen that you know I don't like, but the original Unseen Sunscreen, this is that same silicone texture. It also reminds me a lot of like, do you remember? I say do you remember. They definitely still sell this, the Smashbox primer that was more of that gel texture. That's why I like this because not only am I getting my sun protection, but like both of those other two products I mentioned, this works really well as a base to put makeup on top of. So it's gonna, you're gonna be left with that like silicone smooth finish and then product just sits so well on top of it. I will say, I feel like I have to shake this a good amount because sometimes it almost looks like it's separated a little bit and I guess not even separated, but It'll come out a little bit thin, so I, I do recommend shaking it beforehand, but I do that with most of my skincare. But if you like the unseen sunscreen and you want something that is about half of the price, I would try this one. Another skincare one, this comes from the Inky List. I did a video with them recently actually, but this is their Omega Water Cream. This moisturizer is phenomenal for beneath your makeup. Obviously a moisturizer you can use anyway, you don't have to put makeup on top of it, but if you're looking for one that plays well with cosmetics over top, I think this formula is perfect for that because it has that more gel-like texture to it where it soaks into the skin as opposed to kind of like sitting on top of the skin and leaving a film. I know some of my more hydrating moisturizers they do both, you know, they're definitely sinking into the skin, but they're leaving a nice layer on top. So they're not always conducive to layer makeup products over top of. So I'm very picky about my morning time moisturizer. And I feel like this one both sinks into the skin well and allows product to go on top of it beautifully. Okay, you told me to pick this up. I was getting so many recommendations for so long to try the brand Believe Beauty. So if you're not familiar with this brand, they're actually, and I didn't even realize this at first, they are a Mesa brand, which is the same brand incubator that started Flower Beauty, Kristen S, lots of other brands. So when I saw that on the back of this bottle, when I like purchased this, I was like, oh, I know this is gonna be good. Their foundation is phenomenal. This is called the Skin Finish Foundation. They call it a medium to full coverage. I would definitely agree with that. It's definitely more full coverage than I tend to prefer these days, but if I'm wanting a glam finish, this achieves it beautifully. And it's $5. Nothing is $5 anymore. Like makeup, I mean anything, but like especially in makeup, so few products aside from Essence um, are still coming in at a $5 price, but this foundation does. This brand is a little bit harder to find though because it is only 
at Dollar General. So I had a hard time getting my hands on this. I don't really have a Dollar General near me, but if you do, I would definitely check this brand out. This has a nice smooth finish to it. Again, the coverage is relatively high, but I feel like the consistency and the formula allows you to manipulate it a little bit to make it slightly more full coverage or sheared out. Like you can easily mix it in with something or adjust the steps you're doing beforehand. So I just find it a very adaptable formula. And I feel like the packaging is also beautiful for being a $5 product. This is a glass bottle with a pump. Now the Catrice Soft Glam Filter Fluid. This is pretty much identical to the Elf Halo Glow, which is pretty much identical to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter which is also very similar to so many of the other glowy primers on the market. But this one from Catrice is new. It retails for $10. And I specifically wanted to mention this one, not only because it's a little bit less expensive than the e.l.f., but also I know Catrice is a lot more accessible in Europe. And if you have a hard time getting your hands on some of these other dupes, or even not the dupes, maybe even the high-end ones, I know Catrice is a little bit easier for some people to get their hands on. And this is phenomenal. I did a side-by-side -side a while ago comparing them. I can pop that on the screen so you can see how the e.l.f. looks next to the Catrice. I think they're slightly different where I think the e.l.f. provides a little bit more coverage, but beyond that, I think they can be used in very similar ways, just like the Charlotte Tilbury one, where you can put it beneath your makeup to get a little bit of that glow, or you can apply it on top, or you can wear it on its own. I like to mix these. That's probably my favorite use for this style of product. Specifically, I like to mix it with my liquid blushes, actually, okay? So I like to have like sometimes that glowier look with my liquid blushes without necessarily doing my highlighter separate. I like to mix this in, but you know what I wanna try, actually? I just picked up a liquid bronzer. I picked up the Glossier one. I've been loving it. I'm wearing it currently, but I wonder if I mix something like this in with that, if I could get kind of that glowy bronzy look similar to like the Drunk Elephant de bronzy that everybody is doing these days. I just like there's so many uses for this style of product and I've really been liking the one from Catrice. Now, it is harder to get your hands on in the US. They are only really on their own website and on Amazon because they're not at Ulta anymore, but I love this, it's fantastic. Those are my base favorites. Let's jump into some cheek favorites. And I wanna start with one actually that is not new and you've heard me talk about it, but I think it's pretty similar to a super viral product right now, the Rare Beauty blushes that everybody is talking about. The first time that I tried this, I was like, wait, this reminds me so much of the blushes from Essence. So I just wanted to just shout this out again in today's video. This is the Pure Nude Baked Blush Formula. And I'm not suggesting these are dupes because the formulas are far from identical. However, I think they have a similar enough look that on the skin, you're gonna get a pretty comparable effect between the two products. And these from Essence are $5. I'm holding mine like this because the lid broke off. That's the downside with Essence products for me. Uh, so many of them tend to break. So a lot of times they'll kind of break at the hinge. That happened with this, so I just... I don't know, keep it separately. For a while there, I had a rubber band on it and then I was like, okay, maybe that's not cute. But they're both this baked blush formula, as you can see, and they have that sheen to it. I actually think the Rare Beauty one is a little bit more highlightery. So if you were swatching this or you saw this and you're like, that might be too much glow, I want a little glow, but not so much, try this one from Essence. Actually, I had to go grab this because I'll mention it, you know? The Milani ones are also pretty similar to the Rare Beauty ones. There's not as big of a price difference between these as we're gonna see with the Essence one, but these are also pretty similar. But again, I think the Rare Beauty one looks a lot more like a highlighter on the skin. You know, it kind of has somewhat of a sheer base to it, at least the shade that I have, which is called Cheer. Whereas these two baked blushes, the Essence and the Milani, have a little bit more of that color pigment coming through in addition to the glow. Okay, and this from NYX, I feel like this has been getting a lot of buzz, but let me tell you, it is worth the hype. The new bronzers I'm obsessed with. This is the Buttermelt Bronzer Formula. I have the shade Buttercup. This is the lightest shade. And this whole range has a slightly like rosy undertone to it. Now, not too much, you know, it's not straight up pink. It's not like super, super noticeable, but I would say the tone of it allows it to look a lot more sun-like on the skin because it has that 
rosy quality to it it looks the way your skin would look if you got just like the beginning of a burn which seems like a weird thing to be aiming to get but i just think the tone of it allows it to look super natural on the skin also the formula of this is so blendable like this feels like a high-end bronzer when you're blending it out like truly formula wise this is better than so many high-end bronzers that i have i also find because it has a tiny bit of a sheen to it in addition to the rosy quality it acts as everything so if i'm like running out the door and i only want to choose one step this is the bronzer i'll use because it gives me a slight blushy effect a slight bit of a glow and the bronze like it is really just like your all-in-one product i think this is the best powder bronzer at the drugstore right now like i just think it is such a good formula it's very pigmented but not so much to the point where it's hard to use because sometimes if something is super duper pigmented it's hard to get it to blend out i do not find this to be the case with this it is very beginner friendly effortless to work with such a good formula i also think the packaging just feels nice and sturdy I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels like drugstore packaging, but I do still like the way that it looks. I did just see that they're gonna be doing blushes as well. So I kinda wanna get my hands on those right now, although I definitely don't need another blush ever for the rest of my life, but I think this formula is so fantastic that I'm really curious to see how the blushes would be. I'm going to assume it's the same formula, just in blushy tones, so I like this. And I also think the shade of it would be nice if you have a very cool undertone and you find a lot of bronzers Pull way too warm definitely check this line out okay stop the press i think i found my favorite brown mascara and i've tried a ton i still really love the elf lash extender in brown i love the formula of that phenomenal formula but this is even more brown than that this is the essence lash without limits extreme lengthening mascara in brown so this is what i have on my lashes today it's my favorite brown so far. I feel like it is such a nice chocolatey brown tone. And when I say chocolatey brown, I'm looking for milk chocolate, not dark chocolate, milk chocolatey brown. Like that is the shade of this. The color especially is like the winner for me here. I just love the way that it looks on the lashes. But I also think it's a great formula. It gives me nice hold. It gives me nice length and volume. I wouldn't say it is the most lengthening and voluming, volumizing mascara to ever exist. I think it does it in an, in an adequate amount, if you will. But for me, I like a semi-subtle lash, so keep that in mind. I wouldn't say this is gonna give you the most extreme lashes of life, even though the name might lead you to think that. I think it still looks slightly more natural. Part of that is influenced by the tone of it. Obviously, a black mascara is just gonna translate as significantly more dramatic than a brown, but I really like this for a day-to-day -day look. I haven't, like I said, I have it on today. I think it looks beautiful. I think this just makes brown eyes pop so much. Actually, I just love brown mascara because brown eyes pop with them. Blue eyes, green eyes definitely pop with them. It's a slightly more subtle effect, but I just think it looks so flattering. I also have lots of lip favorites to share. And let's start with this one because I kind of want to reapply it right now. So this is from Hard Candy. I know the packaging of this feels very rare, beauty inspired. You have that little ball tip on the top, but this is called the Glostopia Lip Repair Oil. And this is the shade Pink Paradise. But I will say right off the bat, I don't think it matters too much the shade that you pick up because it's a very sheer formula. But I mean, look at the way this goes on the lips. I just feel like it makes them look like glass like that name is so applicable also it smells nice i mean definitely smells like sugary candy or something but i do like that i also enjoy the shape of the applicator it has a bit of a curve to it so you could apply it with the tip of that or the curve kind of like hugs your lips if you prefer that for an applicator it's just so glossy juicy it feels hydrating i will say i don't think this has the greatest longevity ever but i don't find that to be the case with any lip oil really i just think the nature of this type of product especially the fact that it's not sticky translates to it not lasting forever so this is something i would say be prepared to reapply relatively frequently but formula wise it's great i love the way it looks on my lips i just feel like my lip lines get so smoothed out it's like i start off with my lip liner my lipstick whatever i'm wearing beneath and you know you can see the lines, which is not a bad thing. That's that's human. But when I put this on, it's like, wait, where did they go? It's just so plumped up and filled in. It looks gorgeous. If you like that hyper glossy reflective look, you will love this. Okay, I'm so about lip stains right now. And I have been for a while, but I feel like 
My preference in lip stains keeps changing and right now I have a couple of favorites. So I wanna start with these from CoverGirl. I had this one, you heard me talk about this one recently. I liked it so much I picked up another one and I actually have this one on currently, but kind of as a base. So I have a bunch of lip products over top of it so you probably can't really tell what's what, but this is on there, it's under a few things. But this is the Outlast lip stain. I feel like these have been getting so much buzz lately and it is a lip marker. And the intended purpose of this is to be a lip stain. You could apply it all over your lips, but my use for it is as a lip liner stain because I am such a lip liner girly. I like the look of a defined lip line. I think it's beautiful. I also, I like my lip shape. I have super pointy lips, which I know these days we're kind of told like you should round out the cupid's bow, but I like to do the alternative and emphasize it and make them look even pointier. So. I, I need my lip liner to last and to stay, and that's why I've been loving using lip stains as my lip liner. These last so well, but I will note there's a bit of a learning curve here because this, you have to imagine you're quite literally taking a marker, not, even, not a makeup product, a marker, and drawing it onto your lips. Like that's the way that this applies and performs. So where you put it, immediately it has dried down. There is no give time, so I, I say that to mention that you wanna be pretty precise. I wouldn't necessarily call these super beginner friendly just because they do set immediately. But for me with a lip product, I find that to be less of an issue than somewhere else on my face. You know what I mean? Like if I had a stain that set immediately on my cheek, I think that's gonna make it almost impossible to use. But on the lips, I want the lip line to be defined anyways. I'm not necessarily blending that out so much, so it's not as much of a downside to me, but it's something I wanna note because where you put these, that's where they're going to be, okay? But the wear time is phenomenal, and my favorite use is to take this, apply it when I'm like starting my makeup, okay? I have nothing on, I start with this lip line, I do the rest of my face and then I do my lip combo on top. I might still put on a second lip liner that's actually a pencil and then put the lip in the middle. <laughs> Did that make sense? Like apply the rest of the lip combo. And then I know throughout the night as my lip is fading, the lip liner will still be there underneath. I just think this helps so well with longevity. That's why I love lip stains so much. These are great. They're kind of pricey for the drugstore, but like I said, I just picked up a second one because it's worth it to me. Another lip stain favorite comes from Milani. These, very different formula from the CoverGirl one. So anything I said about CoverGirl, just imagine the opposite for Milani, okay? That's the review, just kidding. But very, very different formula. This one is a liquid, not like a pen like that. And you have a doe foot that comes to a nice point. So this, once again, is kind of intended to be used all over the lips. I do that, but I mostly like this as a lip liner. I think the point on the doe foot allows enough precision for me to draw it around the lip line and use it for that purpose. I don't think, and let me let me be clear, I don't think this has as good of longevity as these do. I think this one fades a little bit faster. I don't mind that, it's just something to point out, but I really love the shades that they have in this. They're not all just like bright red, they've got a lot of browns. I mentioned in another video, this reminds me so, so much of my lip stains from Kaja, which are one of my all-time favorites. And I use this again, similarly to the way that I'm using these, I'm putting it on as a base. And then I'm putting my lip combo on top of it. And when I'm using it as a base, I use it both ways. So sometimes as just like a lip liner stain, similar to how I mentioned with the CoverGirl lip stain. And with that, I'm just applying it on the outer line, letting it sit. Or sometimes I'll wear it as a base over the entire lip and then apply my lip combo over top of that. I feel like both of these methods allow my lip to last all night long. Like even if the stuff on top is fading, I have that stain beneath that's still giving me that color and that pigment. And that, it just gives you like the best longevity. Obviously you could use this on its own. You don't need to do that. This alone could be the lip and it has this very glossy, almost vinyl look on its own if you're just applying this and leaving it on the lip without any other steps at the same time. I also really like the smell of this. It smells like a food to me and I can't quite put my fingers on what it is. Maybe like a vanilla -y. A, like a, a sugar cookie or something like that. I think it smells great. In general, the Milani color fetish line is really wonderful. I also love the lipsticks that are part of this, the fruit fetish lip oils, anything from Milani under the fetish line 
is pretty good in my opinion. I love all these new drugstore products. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Definitely check out the link down below to get your first month for 55% off using my code Kelly55OFF. And if you wanted some scent recommendations, I'm still loving milk from Commodity that I mentioned in my last Scentbird video. And then out of my picks from this month, my favorites were probably Amber Vanilla and Extra Milk. Those have definitely been the ones that have gotten me the most compliments recently, especially Amber Vanilla. Thank you so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next video. Bye.